Okay, <coughs> let's look at question 4b. Remember, before I continue, you can visit the website mathematicsclass.org and give me an additional tip anytime you want if you think I deserve it, all right? If this helps you out. But anyway, we continue. Part B says P, the point P, 6, negative 1, and Q, 2, 7 are the endpoints of a line segment P, Q. Determine the gradient of P, Q. All right. You do have a formula that you could use that um, to get the gradient of P, Q. What it says is the gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. What you could do is consider this P as point 1 and consider this as x1, y1, q as point 2 and consider this as x2, y2 and substitute them. So I want you to pause the video try that and see what you get for the gradient so pause okay we're back what did you get we won't work it out just yet but there's something else I want you to try as well if you had this as a graph and you had your x and y axis alright and let's say you had 0 0 here and this is, say, 6 is out here. And you had negative 1 here. P would be at 6, negative 1. At x is equal to 6 and y is equal to negative 1. That would be your P. The Q would be at where x is 2 and y is 7. Say 7 is up here. So, about here would be Q. Then you would have a line going from here to here. So, from this, if you rise from negative 1 to 7, you remember you have your rise over run as a gradient. Let me use M for the gradient. So, if you rise this would be the rise from negative 1 to 7 you would rise 8 All right, and if you run between 2 and 6 you would run how, how far? 4 so you would rise 8 and run 4 and notice as you go from left to right you would be falling along the line, so it would have a negative gradient. Now what that would mean is that you have a negative 8 over 4 is 2. Hmm. Let's see how well that works out over here. y2 is 7 minus y1 is negative 1 over x2 is 2 minus x1 which is 6. So what happened over here? 7 minus negative 1 is 7 plus 1 over 2 minus 6. So what you have is 7 plus 1 is 8 over 2 minus 6 is negative 4 and that gives you negative 2. Same thing. So you have these two ways of, of working it out. Was negative 2 what you got? Did you get negative 2? Well that would be nice. Right? If you didn't, you need to try it again. Now, this is part B1. What does part B2 say? What are the coordinates of the midpoint of PQ? Let's copy this and paste it over here where we're working. Let me paste it here. The coordinates of the midpoint. Alright, let me just let's just erase what we are doing here and go to the midpoint 
how do you get the midpoint again? You have a line. Any line. Alright? Let's say this line. And you want the midpoint. You have an x1 and a y1. Good. You have an x2 and a y2. You find the average distance between x1 and y1. So the midpoint is the average of x1 and y1. How do you get the average of two numbers again? You add them. x1 plus y1 over plus x1 x2 x1 plus x2 i mean the average of x1 and x2 i should have said all right so finding the average of x1 and x2 is x1 plus x2 over 2 comma the average of y1 and y2 y1 plus y2 over 2 that will give you the coordinates of the midpoint all right so the midpoint is what we have this as x1 y1 this as x2 y2 x1 is 6 plus x2 is 2 half of that comma y1 is negative 1 plus y2 is a uh, 7 over 2 good so we have 6 and 2 is 8 over 2 negative 1 plus 7 negative 1 plus 7 is going to be positive 6 over 2 so the midpoint is really 8 over 2 is what 4 4 comma 3 4 3 so now looking at it you could also get the midpoint from the this little graph that we sketch here if you go to 4 right this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 you notice 4 from 2 to 4 you go 1 2 point from 4 to 6 you go 1 2 so it's halfway so the midpoint is somewhere here as for 3, you will go negative 1, 0. 1, this went up to where? Uh, up to 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 3 is here. From negative 1 is 1, 2, 3, 4 units. From 3 to 7 is 1, 2, 3, 4 units. So 3 is really halfway between all the way down here and all the way up here all right so you have the midpoint if you do it on a graph you would see so it's four three is a midpoint all right four three remember they have this formula sometimes if you try to remember formula you get mixed up all right if it's not on the formula sheet once you understand it and can derive the formula quickly you won't have a problem what else did I want you to do? Oh, the equation of the perpendicular bisector of PQ. Mm -hmm. My, my. The equation of the perpendicular bisector of PQ. Alright, so. We saw that the gradient. We saw what the gradient was here. The gradient was negative 2, and the midpoint was located at 4, 3. Alright, the perpendicular bisector. You have to remember what perpendicular means and what bisector means. First of all, perpendicular means that it is at 90 degrees. It is at right angle, alright, to the line. So, the perpendicular bisector must have a gradient of what? What must be the gradient of the perpendicular bisector? 
you have to remember that when two lines are perpendicular and 90 degrees the gradients multiply to give negative 1 what that means that the negative 2 you got for this gradient multiplied by the new gradient call it G of the bisector call it GB gradient of the bisector just making up a name for it is equal to negative 1 so the gradient of the bisector must be you divide negative 1 divided by negative 2 divide both sides by negative 2 so it is half positive half so, so far you remember the e equation of a straight line y is equal to mx plus c so far you know that the gradient is half so y is equal to half x plus c good the problem now is to find what the c is how do you do that you have to find an x and a y that is on the perpendicular bisector now which point is on the perpendicular bisector remember you have three unknowns if you find a point that is on the perpendicular bisector let us say the perpendicular bisector is somewhere here can you identify any point that lies on the perpendicular bisector on the line on the PB you can see it it's this point here the midpoint remember to bisect the line you draw halfway bisect you locate you're going to draw another line through halfway so this point is on the perpendicular bisector and this point x is 4 and y is 3 you can see that so what you do I don't really need all of these things anymore all right sometimes seeing all of this mess from the previous work can confuse you all right so what you do here is to say the y that we want to substitute here is 3 so it's 3 is equal to half times and we want to substitute x is 4 plus why am I writing equal plus c good so this is 3 is equal to half of 4 is what 2 plus c so subtract 2 from both sides so you get 3 minus 2 is equal to 2 minus 2 plus c well you don't have, you wouldn't have to worry about the 2 anymore that's gone what is 3 minus 2 that's negative 1 so c is equal to negative 1 good so the equation is going to be remember the equation x and y are variables they vary they keep changing so you're not going to write any specific number for x and y so you just write y is equal to the gradient which is a specific number is a constant half of x plus c plus negative 1 but of course x plus negative 1 is the same as x minus 1 so y is equal to half x minus 1 is it is the equation right is the equation remember what they wanted you to do is the equation of the perpendicular bisector so the equation is uh, y is equal to half x minus 1 all right whichever form you write it in remember you could also if you wanted you could also write it as when you multiply both sides by 2 another way that you could have it is 2y is equal to x minus 2 no problem same thing all right okay so let's see what else they want you to do ah question 4 is done We'll move on to question 5 at a later date.